In this video, we're at the fantastically named Middle Wallop at the Army Flying Museum uh, for the Fuel Power Party. So uh, we've brought Bella and Bob and we're showing them off and the Hublets are delighted in the background. Uh, let's see what else is here at this Fuel Power Party. So we'll start with a quick mention for Joseph Lloyd uh, Vehicle Consulting, I think is his channel, uh, Rover 45 V6, just like my old one. I really do miss that car, it was lovely. Didn't have any torque, but it was otherwise lovely. So very rare with the um, KV6 two litre engine. Uh, very, very nice car. And it's also the saloon. I don't think we got the uh, V6 as a hatchback, which is a shame. I would love a hatchback V6. Had dreams about building one at one point, but it never quite happened. Here we have two very, very different cars. The common link is they both use the BMC A-Series engine. We've got a Lotus 11 replica, a Westfield kit uh, that's packing um, a modified A-Series engine, about 110 brake horsepower apparently. And then we've got Alex Charles' lovely brown Russet Allegro, which is uh, less than 30,000 miles from new. So let's go and have a look at both cars. So th this one was at one point going to be broken for spares, but thankfully wasn't. And it's just in lovely, slightly sort of knocked about, but period items. It, uh, yeah, it's a lovely, honest car that's undergoing some improvement works, um, even as we it's speak, nice really. Sticker. Yeah, it's got, got the lovely Hubnut sticker, but also this original University oh, wow. Motors British Leyland dealer sticker, which is really, really nice. So obviously a lot slower than the um, Westfield over here. This is quite an intriguing thing. Uh, the Mark 11 was uh, designed so you could have a road car that you could take to the racetrack. That was very much the thinking of it, hence this sort of mini D type styling. So yeah, really nice build, looks really nice. And next to this pair, we have a car you may rem remember. It's the Yugo Sana, looking much, much cleaner than when we uh, last saw it, of course. And uh, it's been even been cleaned inside. So here, here's a view you won't have seen. Uh, the inside without chains, rusty flakes on the floor. It's all been cleaned up. It's looking lovely. Uh, even they even found the keys. The keys were actually in the engine bay, tied to the clutch mechanism for reasons we don't realize. So I had, I had the keys all the time without realizing it. Yeah, still a lot of work to be done. Uh, it's looking quite smart on these Fiat wheel trims, which um, acknowledges the Fiat heritage lurking within this design. But yeah, great to see it. And uh, yeah, really nice. And various they, they, bits of they archaeology. Have big plans. Yeah, I'm loving this. This is stuff that's been dug out of the um, Yugo Sana. I well remember the bit of chain, the random blue wire looping its way through the engine bay. That source of much, much, much discussion. Yeah, so the actual alarm itself is still there. <laughs> I don't believe they've got it running yet, but... Uh, awesome t-shirts also. Working on it. Oh yes, I remember you. Oh, Ian, that sounded really poignant. I know, but I do. And th that was the alarm. So that's the, the motion sensor within the alarm. So if that contacted, it would set the car alarm off. And the lovely touches like made in Yugoslavia and yeah, all that kind of thing. It's lovely. So yeah, they're very happy with it. And um, I'm looking forward to some more progress. They've got good Serbian links and that will hopefully help. We've also got t-shirts that I think are I available to buy. They are super cool. Yeah, look at this. From grot to not. There we go. Fuel Power being the channel. So this, this actually belongs to Matt Pink, who's one of their friends, mm -hmm. but he has done a few videos already about the Sana. This That's is one of their times. extended fleet. Yeah. Uh, next to that, we have a Dacia Sandero Stepway. Uh, this is an extended fleet member also. Uh, so the slightly chunkier, more off-roady sort of look, but with none of the actual off roaderiness but uh, I, I'm quite intrigued by these. I must admit, I, I would like to actually do a test drive on one of these, I think. Uh, this is about as hubnut as modern cars get. And I think we would actually benefit from the raised ground clearance living where we do in Wales. Certainly something that's very good about the Bolingo. Uh, next to that, we've got a Land Rover Discovery Series 2, but it's a facelift Series 2 with an awful lot of modifications, different rear bumper and uh, sill. I'm surprised uh, Lee Hubnut hasn't given this a good eyeball in. He, he's had a fairly good look. Yeah, that's looking quite beefy. That uh, is. I, I do like these. Oh, hello. He's got a Land Rover Special Vehicles sticker on it. 
So special vehicles, um, SVO to some folks, special vehicle operations, would do custom builds on cars for differing requirements. And uh, yeah, that is um, quite the beast. I like it a lot. I, I love how when they did the facelift on the uh, Series 2 Discovery, they fitted these round lights, which just sort of hint at the earlier Land Rovers. Really nice touch. And next to that, we've got a delicious Austin A30 van. We can tell it's an A30 because it's got the chrome grille, but these remain in production until I think 1968 as the later A35, but always had these earlier doors with these indentations in. Uh, that's very, very nice to see. And here's the uh, Fuel Power Party headquarters here. They've got some lovely merch. Come, come and have they a look at the merch. They are super organized. Look at these lovely 3D printed rocker covers. Fuel very Power. Cool. Yeah, and spark plugs as well. Oh, that's a lovely look at the organization. <laughs> I know, it's impressive. Putting us to shame that's what, that's what we need. We need some Tupperware pots, clearly. Absolutely. So yeah, this is party headquarters. I've we'll just seen there's a Trixie sticker. I think I need that in my Okay, we, we can do some purchasing. Excellent. If we come round, we've got a um, Sinclair C5 here. Oh, Ian. Oh, yeah. I think, I think that's um, Mr. Pink's bike. That's it is. Quite I believe it funky. came from California, but don't quote me. Okay. Electric bike, I like that a lot. But yeah, beyond the C5. Oh yes. We find Trixie. This is an absolutely delicious tiny little caravan which can be towed by a Mini. Yes. And uh, it's just delightful, look at oh, it. Look. Oh look. Everything you need and not a bit more. So obviously we couldn't resist um, spending a little bit more time with this fleet member. This is Trixie and uh, Len is here to tell us a little bit more about Trixie. Yes, so we got Trixie from Wales actually last, uh, no not last year, beginning of this year and when we got her she was uh, a little bit tired to say the least um, and needed a lot of renovation work. <laughs> she was very pink and grimy, we used to go to a lot of horse shows and that kind of oh, thing. Oh, so, cracky. Yeah, okay, they yeah. would go <laughs> stay in this to sort of stay overnight so they could have a drink and drive safely home the next day, which was very sensible. Um, this is kind of what she looked like on the inside when we bought her. As oh, you can gosh. see, there's a lot of pink, uh, rather disgusting carpet um, <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, it was apparently purple when it started and it was glittery. So as we oh, started wow. bringing everything out, it was all coming out in the fibres. Um, yeah, she was I, saw, also, I saw you had loads of glittery sticks on the outside as yes, well. Yes, yeah, we that took all some the time. powered by fairy dust and things like that, <laughs> which was lovely. Um, but she was pink on the outside as well, so we've changed that to match with, uh, she matches with Millie. Yeah, and just pretty much overhauled everything. Mm. We don't know very much about her actually mm. at all because when we ask people, people to say, or when we've taken her to shows, it's been, oh, what's that? What, <laughs> did you make that yourself kind of thing? Is it, what's it made of and all sorts? My dad's a carpenter by trade, so remade all of the cupboards and everything like Brilliant. that to fit everything in. And Jake's mum is a, uh, she used to be a designer in the carpet industry. Um, and generally it's just very arty and stuff like that. So it helps me cover the, um, all the seats and Brilliant. cushions and stuff. And Looks we made lovely. the curtains and everything. So, yeah, yeah, the curtains, we were admiring the curtains earlier because they're just so perfect, aren't yeah. they? They're and just so tiny. I threw a spanner in the works a couple of days before we were supposed to be using it the first time. And said, oh, so we've got blinds, but now the no, flies are still going to get in. As you can tell, we're obviously not. So she took the blinds apart and put laugh. the fly net on them. To Fantastic. make it so that the fly net can come down and then the blind can go down over the top. <laughs> and you've rewired as well, haven't you? Yeah, Jake's yeah. rewired everything. Uh, there is God knows how many metres of cable in this caravan. Um, but yeah, there's lights all over the place. So you've got the little ones that... Oh, we've just got our own baggage £10 now. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> I know we've got some up here and that kind of thing and like these little touch ones. Which is just brilliant. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? It's bringing because Bob obviously is older, is bringing them into sort of the modern era, isn't it? Yeah. Because you've got your USBs and everything as yes. well, which just makes things... And they're actually really fast charging as well. Really? Which is really helpful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're finding Bob is, is, but Bob's running off the mains most of the time. <laughs> when he's on 12 volt, not so much. But it's a brilliant, brilliant little project that you've got here. How does it work? Where do you cook? Where do you, you know... Um, we have a, in here, we've got a, uh, like just a camping stove that originally we were going to get some sort of flip out thing that we haven't quite got round to doing yet so at the moment we just take this out on a little stand and just pop it out the back of the car thankfully we've only ever had nice weather when we've been camping because we haven't been very many times on this side 
you've got a little bit of storage space and then a little sink. A little tiny sink. Oh my gosh, it's the tap. Yeah, the tap. And oh, then you put the tap clever. and the little hug up, uh, switch up there powers the water from the uh, little storage container outside. Brilliant. So I'm assuming two berth. Yes, <laughs> it's cosy. You have to know the person you're sharing with really well and like them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's just this kind of area. You have to take the table out. Mm -hmm. And there's two more cushions, which we left at home today just to save space. Yeah. But they run this way along and you get a sort of six foot by four foot bed. That's really good. That's yeah. really good. I think she's brilliant. I think she's brilliant. I'm very pleased to have met her. But I think you guys have done a fantastic job. I love the Mr. Men because it's kind of of the era. Yeah, of, we've got uh, proper, it's proper 80s fabric as well. Oh, is it? It's, yeah, it's oh, proper e wow. an eBay job, that was. Yeah, it's just really, really nicely done. And you're following sort of caravan tradition because you've painted it to match your car. That's mm -hmm. what they used to do with the sprites. Yeah. So, because my parents had a sprite and it was blue and I don't believe it came out blue. So, um, yeah, it's just lovely to see that, you know, it's, it's that tradition and that you're not nervous of touching it and make it oh no that's the original point. because yeah. it's like we found with bob it's a very individual thing this camping scenario so yeah thank you for giving me your time because it's i know you've been extremely <laughs> it's fine. busy it's nice today. to get out from my gazebo for extremely a little bit extremely <laughs> busy today but you've done a fantastic job thank and you. on both on the camper and also today has been brilliant thank you really 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 good so thank you very much so yeah bobby's here kind of a bit of a comparison but yeah when it comes to a family of four and two dogs that's probably not the one for us but yeah this is millie the mini lovely little um city fairly late one and um, yeah h that's about 1990 so still be on a carburetor i think at this age she's uh been a little bit of a madam today she's been trailered in and uh she needs to be on bestest behavior because she's off the isle of white next week oh isle of white mm. well you better behave yes yeah, she is uh, uh little, C5? Little, little panda oh. Oh, sorry. Oh, five? You want to look at this, do you? <laughs> we've yeah, done, I've we've done a test not of a seen one in the, in the flesh. So. This one's missing some important items, I feel, like pedals and handlebars. Still, so it's a work in progress. Cool. Yeah, so cool. So cool. Delightful styling. It's, it couldn't mm. be from any other era than the 1980s. No, not at all. No. Not at all. Um, yeah, they've got a little Fiat 100 HP here. So, um, fuel power, I, I think they're big into their. Fiat's and their minis, which is obviously going to have an effect. I think this today. one's Jake's. Oh, okay. Don't quote me on that. Pogo. But yeah, looking quite funky. We need to do a test drive on one of those. We've only driven the 1.1, your parents' own car. I know. <laughs> and uh, that definitely did not quite have enough power. Uh, I suspect that will address it quite nicely. So yeah, m many Fiat 500s. Do you know what's yeah. lovely here is seeing all the um, support for each other. So lots of driven 24 7 stickers lots yeah, of fuel yeah. stickers. there are other youtubers here mr Rick. kitch himself up and down vids was meant to be here but sadly had to um, pull out for family reasons but carrying on down the lineup subaru impreza uh, rare to see in this later form and another modified abarth that's, <laughs> a, that's a, a a compact little engine bay isn't it i love the little um bonnet opener yeah that's nice. cool very cool so yes a great many um abarths and fiat 500s Oh, that's a beautiful colour. I must colour. say, one of my favourite things about the Fiat 500 is the font. I, yeah. I love that. That is so clever and so simple. And uh, it's a lovely design touch. Just unmistakably Italian, really, isn't it? Uh, th this Fiat 500 looks remarkably like a Mini. <laughs> that's all right. We're, we're all friends here. And everyone's <laughs> sort of... So we've got the retros all together. But yeah, I've never driven a Fiat 500, so I can't really comment... An awful lot on them but some of them could have be had with a twin air engines some conventional four cylinders oh, this is the one miss little miss have not clocked with the minions powered by minions yeah <laughs> yeah there's a lot of personalization going on and it's good good to see uh someone likes grogu apparently and baymax this incidentally is mini hubnut's favorite car of the show is that it? He was saying the small blue car. Yeah. And there are a few blue That's cars small. up here. And I know he's fairly small himself, but I think that is still too small. Oh, the for little him. toad. Is he going to put that in the in the competition? He might do. He we will, won't he? Yeah. He's a little toad. Um, for Mondeo, you think this is end of the line for the Mondeo right there? Golf. Very noisy Volkswagen Golf. Five cylinder, do we think there? Uh, Honda CRZ hybrid. Quite an intriguing thing. Quite nice styling on those. Again, something else I'd like to try. Uh, Mini Clubman. 
I drove one of those in Sydney, Australia, where the air conditioning was not up to the job, but I suspect it was slightly broken. And it also didn't really seem to have any suspension at all. Uh, Peugeot 208, I think this is an electric one. They're available as electric or they have three cylinder petrol engines, I think. Uh, there were some of these in the rally, uh, Rally Aberystwyth. If you head to the Hub Notes channel, we did a quick little video. Rally Ceredigion. We went to Rally Ceredigion. Yeah, in Aberystwyth. Good fun. And th these were exceedingly noisy. Uh, Colour Clash Tastic over here. We've got a Toyota MR2 Mark II in a ludicrous shade of That's green. Glorious. Glorious, yeah. Next to a Nissan 100NX. Uh, sunny based, I think, or pulsar based, depending on your market. And uh, yeah, really nice. Got the twin top um, roof on it. It's lovely Mark III MR2, uh, which don't have any um, boot space at all. And perhaps surprisingly, a second <laughs> 100NX. This one belonging to Amber, uh, driven 24 7. And she's got her roof panels off. She went full brave mode. So you've got the. Um, yeah, no roof. <laughs> Sorry, can we have that action again? Is that a good action? Yep, yep. Yeah, just demonstrating the lack of roof. But yeah, with lack of frame on the doors, that's quite funky. So you get convertible motoring with fewer of the downsides. Uh, automatic. Is this one of Amber's recent purchases? I can't keep up with Amber's purchases. <laughs> she's worse than me. Uh, she buys cars all the time. I just love the fact she's like, I'm never buying another car. Oh, oh, I appear oh, to have bought another one. car. Yeah. This. Probably car of the show for me. This is a Sunbeam Alpine. It's oh, 1725 wow. Series 5. I think it might be a GT. Because on the GT, you've got a hard top, but you didn't get a soft top. So you either had to be brave and leave the hard top at home or drive around with a roof on. But yeah, it's got a 1725cc engine. Uh, it's been slightly modified to have slightly incorrect indicators. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So normally it would be a combined side light indicator to unit. These look like they're from a Mini. Maybe they were fitted especially for the event, but it's got a lovely look to it. Um, clearly unrestored, or if it has been restored, it was a very long time ago. And I like that, you can kind of really feel the history. There's another Mini Clubman here. This one's uh, an electric one, I believe. So, but I think we need to look at some proper Minis. That'll cause some upset. Oh God, Ian, so you let's didn't. Go, let's go and have a look over here. So a key rival for Bella de Bolingo here, the Fiat Doblo. And uh, perhaps even more uncompromising uncompr in terms of shape. It's just Gosh. so curvy at the front. And then it's just a huge box at the rear. I would not be against the idea of trying a bit of Doblo in my life, I must admit. Somebody's trying to sneak a Doblo into the um, Bolingo meat. Oh, are they? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a bit controversial. I, I'm not averse. Uh, another Mini, a five-door one with a Union Jack rear lights. But again, this is another favourite of mine in the show. This little 1979 uh, Mini. I think it's a one litre. It's still got the Leyland badge on it. I think we've got his channel on the side there. Yep, Mini yeah. Mac TV. We've got these absolutely delicious little 10 inch alloy wheels. I don't know if they're Dunlops or well, I don't know what they are, but they're very, very smart, very stylish, very, very of the period. But it's still got the black grille as it would have had from the factory. And it's apparently called Bumble. And that's really nice, I like that a lot. Uh, the, the other end of the 70s, this is about a 72 Mini Cooper Mark III, I think. Uh, so the last of the original Coopers. Uh, Cooper S apparently, it's got the badge. Got the Monte Carlo um, headlamp set up, the three lamps. That's a really smart car, very nice. And it's hard to believe but this, there's almost 20 years between these two minis. This one's about an 88, 89. Uh, nice bit of chrome on it, looks nice. This one's an early Cooper when the Cooper came back. They originally did a limited run of Coopers, now known as RSPs, Rover Special Projects. Uh, and then they came in for a proper version. It's got um, an ECU crammed onto the inner wing here next to the brake servo. They worked so hard to cram all this in. And on Japanese spec ones, they even managed to cram air conditioning into these. No idea Where? how. Where? Yeah. So that's lovely. An, an R50 uh, Mini, I think. Mini Addict 84. 
I think R53 refers to the fact it's a Cooper S, I think. I'm, I'm not, oh, there we go. Supercharged adventure in progress. There's our, there's our clue. But R50 is the base type of these first modern minis, which of course are starting to look quite retro now because they are over 20 years old. Yeah, yeah. How? How did that happen? No cake left in this mini overnight. <laughs> Probably sensible. So th these are both um, fairly late Mini Coopers with the um, optional sport pack. 13 inch wheels, big fat arches, and uh, I think they look amazing, but by all accounts, it's not the best um, modification Rover ever made to the cars. It's kind of just trying to extend uh, the model a little later. This one's on an X plate, that's like 2000s. So that's right at the end of production. But yeah, I think they look fabulous with these Beautiful. sport pack arches, even if it's not the best in terms of performance or handling. It's funny to say big fat rims when talking about 13 inches. I know, 13, 13 is now <laughs> tiny. You so still, beefy. <laughs> still have the fine places that stop what um, were they, 13 inch usually? wheels. 10s originally, yeah. yeah. And a very interesting vehicle here at the end. Uh, this is a Mini Phoenix. So Phoenix was um, a rust proof Mini. Despite the looks, it's very, very... Um, this is very clever, actually. Yeah, yeah very, very, very rat look. Clever. It looks like, oh, it's rusted look. away. It's fiberglass, so there's nothing to rust. So don't pee on it. Uh, yeah, it's a, a rust proof car. They built about 70 and there's only about, about 10 left, did it say here? 10 or 11 known to survive. Now this, this, this one has a Suzuki twin cam engine crammed yeah. into it just for extra 1.3, I think. But if you come around this way, you see it's actually a, a practical, practical estate car. Yeah, the interior is quite remarkable. Uh, super. The more you look, the more you see. The it's more you see. Amazing. Yeah. Really, really nice. <laughs> Fire missiles. <laughs> Just brilliant. It's one way of dealing with um, people who cut you yeah, up. People yeah, people get in your way. Yeah. And I think this is our final car of um, the show, isn't it? There's a what? What's down there? Ferrari. I'm not going to look at a Ferrari. It's a modern one. I don't know anything about them. No, but you can look at it because the owners bought it and you have to show appreciation for all the cars. Okay, I've been told. Not the last car we're looking at is this Fiat Seicento. <laughs> it's uh, absolutely delicious. Oh, come here. Come here. The interior is lovely. Look at the oh, stripy seats. But look, look the cassette storage <gasps> boxes over on the, um, well, I suppose you'd call it a parcel shelf. That's great. Oh, this is lovely. Yeah, really nice. Lovely um, alloys on it as well. But really nice straight condition. Lovely looking car. Oh, no. Well, I'm pleased to see the Fat Willys Surf Shack sticker. Uh, they used to be everywhere in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, rear wiper delete. Oh, there's no. a little... Apparently there is a slug club. Yeah. Is that for slow cars? Or, or is this for slug because it's slow? I don't know. But there we go. I like, oh, I like really the red tinted arms. rear lights as well. I think they're from the mm. Sporting. Very nice. It's an interesting right. design, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a really it's unusual, really clean, really nice, very much of its time. It's got a feel of a lot of the concept cars at that time, hasn't it? Yeah, it With has. That, that rear, Definitely got those vibes. That simplistic look. Yeah. Yeah, I like it very much. Right, let's go over here then, where we must look at some vehicles. Over oh yeah, this gliders. happens. Constantly. Well, that's a glider with an engine. And there just, just happens to be a plane there and a tank over there. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't actually been anywhere near the museum. We haven't managed to look around it at all, but it sounds like it's probably worth um, a look around. Uh, so yeah, we've got a Honda CRV, a nice decent 4x4s, and then a Ferrari of some sort. I don't actually know, but we have got a Pantograph wiper moment, so uh, there's something to revel <laughs> Take in. Take a moment, is it, dear? Yeah. Look at that jewel armed loveliness. I don't actually know what it is, so there's no point even guessing really. It is a Ferrari. Um, after 355, I'm afraid I get a bit lost. I had to get the camera back out again because this Volvo 480 has just arrived. Classic retro modern, very good magazine in the background. Uh, really, really nice to see the old Volvo 480s. Quite unlike any other car that has ever existed really. Lovely font on those number plates. Look at those curved characters. Yum, yum. So that's very good to see. But also something else we should probably go and have a look at. So there is actually a plan to try and revive Millie the Mini. Uh, a little unhappy, arrived here not under her own power. But uh, they're trying to revive 
Uh, the engine looks all sorts of mods. We've got a nice modern radiator here at the side, as they always were on minis. Silicon hoses. So hopefully she'll come back. Ah, uh, no dice. It's a bit quicker turning over, but still no spark. Well, I thought we stood a chance of winning Furvis Travels, but no, we've actually got an Abarth here from Ukraine, which given the current circumstances is quite remarkable. So yeah, well done, little Abarth. Nothing. Sadly, the party was all a bit too much for this little mini. It looks like the ignition module um, on the um, electronic ignition is broken, no one has a spare, so uh, sad times, it's gonna have to be trailered back home. But uh, an interesting reminder that modern technology definitely has its uses, I'm a big fan of electronic ignition, but yeah, it can go wrong. So sometimes you're best keeping all the old bits um, along with you, just in case. That's a lesson I should definitely pay attention to myself. So that was us at the fuel power party um, here down at uh, Middle Wallop. And uh, yeah, it's been great. So uh, great to see really nice mix of cars here. Uh, really nice mix of minis as well. I do like minis. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell. Slick.